Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to be speaking about Claude's new computer use capabilities and I'm going to be speaking about what it is, how it works and how to use it. So Anthropic recently released updates to their Claude 3.5 Sonnet and 3.5 Haiku models. As part of this update, they actually gave Claude 3.5 the ability to interact with your computer. Looking at this section over here, they're basically saying that they wanted to upgrade the way that AI was used to complete tasks. So they wanted to give their AI model general computer skills. So these skills are specifically to be able to move the mouse and click the mouse, to type in a keyboard, to read what's going on on the screen. And actually with a combination of mouse clicks and typing on a keyboard, it can also use any program that you have installed on your computer. So if you're on a computer right now, I want you to look at your hands and you can see that one of your hands is on a mouse and one of your hands is on a keyboard. And I want you to close your eyes. And if you close your eyes, you actually can't see anything. So if I was to say, hey, can you go onto the internet? Can you open up Facebook? Can you go onto Instagram? you probably wouldn't be able to go on your computer and navigate to the search bar, click your bookmark and open up Instagram. It'd be very difficult. But when you open your eyes, you can actually see exactly what's going on on the screen. And then you can move your mouse across to your internet tab. And then you can go into the search bar and then you can type in Instagram, hit enter, and then you open up Instagram on your browser. So just by simply having control of the mouse, the keyboard, and being able to visually see what's going on on the screen, you can navigate anything on your computer. That's why over here, it can actually access all of your programs. So if you have Shopify, you can ask it to log in and download a report. Or if you have make.com, you can ask it to log in and build a scenario for you. All right, so now you might be thinking, all right, cool, it can move the mouse, it can click on a keyboard, it can see what's going on, it can go onto my Instagram. But actually, how does it work? So back in the article that we're reading before, if we just scroll down a little bit more, over here, we have a post about developing the computer use tool. So let's click into it. And over here, the title is developing a computer use model. Now this is important because this AI is gonna be specifically geared towards operating computer. And scrolling down, just like I mentioned before, the latest version of Claude 3.5 Sonnet now has the ability to control a computer and actually just needs the appropriate software setup. We're gonna go over the software setup in a second. And this software setup is essentially a virtual environment which will give the AI a virtual keyboard, a virtual mouse, and then virtual eyes. So like I mentioned over here, with the virtual mouse, it can actually move the mouse and click. With the virtual keyboard, it can actually type. And then with the virtual eyes, it can actually see what's going on on the screen and navigate the interface. Now, I wanna come back to this point I made earlier about developing a computer use model. So why is it important that this is called a model? So I've just opened up Anthropic's computer use documentation. This is the API documentation that uh, is Look, it's still in beta mode, so it's not gonna be super perfect, but this gives you an idea of exactly what's going on behind the scenes. So if I scroll to the top, let me just zoom in. There's a lot of information here about sensitive information sharing and security and stuff like that. So you should read this, but essentially what you need to know is that if you do give the AI full control of your computer, you have to do so in a way that's very contained and uh, basically in a secure environment. Now, just to jump forward for a second, Anthropic on their GitHub actually introduced a way for you to launch this in that secure and safe environment. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So now scrolling down a little bit more, you can see that this is actually a, a regular API call. And this API call includes some tools and these tools help you operate the computer. So they help you click the mouse, type on a keyboard, and then it actually takes screenshots of the screen and then it analyzes that screenshot to be able to navigate the interface. But yeah, it's just an API call. And there's some more information here about how it works in the back end. But basically you still send a prompt. So like over here, it's save a picture of a cat to my desktop. But by sending this prompt in that API call and this model, which has the ability to click the mouse, type on a keyboard and take screenshots and view what's going on in the actual screen is able to execute those tools. So it's able to use those tools and actually navigate on your computer. Now scrolling down a little bit more, the important thing to note is that right now to use this, you actually have to use this within a containerized environment. So it's like you have to create a mini computer within your computer, and then you have to operate that mini computer. So coming back to our worksheet for a second in the how does it work section. So we have to run this API call inside something called a container. And for our demo, we're gonna be using something called Docker. So you can just go to docker.com and access this. And this gives you the ability to run something within a container. And back on Anthropic's GitHub code, they actually tell you how to deploy this using a Docker container so that you can run this on your computer. And this is the exact interface that we're speaking about. So right now I'm actually on localhost 8080. This is not a website for Anthropic. This is just me running the environment from my Docker. And to show you how Docker looks, it's just an application. And within this application, it's basically creating a virtual environment where I can run this computer use demo. And it's projecting that virtual environment into our web browser. So I'm gonna go over the setup towards the end of this video. But at a high level, let's actually just give this a go and see how it works. So looking over here, I've got some preset models. I've got the Claude 3.5 chosen, which is what I need to use to make those API calls to actually control my computer. 
I've then got my Anthropic API key. Then I've got this chat interface with the logs where I can actually just insert requests over here and then they'll be executed and I can visually see exactly what's going on in this screen. And then over here, I've got some virtual tools, which is a Google Sheets. I've got a command line, I've got Mozilla Firefox, and I've got a couple of different tools like PDF and Calculator. So the first thing that you should notice is that this environment right now is not actually controlling my actual computer. It's controlling a virtual computer within my computer. Anyway, let's give this a request and see what happens. So I've got a request over here, which is basically saying, go to Amazon, find three cordless headphones, and then add the results to a spreadsheet. So I'm gonna hit enter. And now we have a little icon that says running agent. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. So the first thing is that we got a response back saying, okay, I'm gonna do these two steps. So I'm gonna go to Firefox, which is an internet browser, open up Amazon, find the headphones, and then create the spreadsheet. And on the right hand side, you can see exactly what's happening. So I'm not controlling any of this. Now you can see these screenshots over here. So the reason for these screenshots is to basically identify, okay, where's Mozilla Firefox? And then it clicks onto the Firefox icon, it opens up the web browser. And if I keep scrolling through this left hand side panel, you see it opens up the browser. It takes another screenshot and it looks at exactly where it has to type in the request. And on the right hand side, you can see that it's basically opened up Amazon and it's gonna be typing in a little bit. Okay, there we go. It just typed in wireless headphones and now it's taking another screenshot. So if I just match up with, with exactly where this is, it's currently looking at this page and let's see what it does next. Okay, so it's scrolling a little bit. It's gonna find some wireless headphones. So yeah, you can see the processing time is pretty slow. It's obviously a lot slower than if you were a human going and doing this task yourself but I can imagine it's gonna get faster and faster. But each of these screenshots corresponds to an API call. So in the back end, we're taking this screenshot, we're sending it across to our API endpoint, which is that computer use model. It's then being processed, and then information is being sent back to the front end, which is this interface, and then, and then actions are being completed on our virtual computer. Okay, so we're actually up to creating a spreadsheet with some more information. All right, nice, we just closed that dialog box and look at the comment it actually gave back into the transcript. Let me close the dialog by clicking OK. So I was able to solve the problem of this dialogue being a blocker for actually adding some information to our spreadsheet. But now over here, we actually have information. So brand, price, rating, and key features. So let's scroll down, let's scroll down. And that's exactly what's happening. We're taking screenshots of each step and then we're processing the information, adding it into our spreadsheet. And over here, it's actually even saving the spreadsheet. So it's gonna find the save button and it's gonna save it for me as well. This is actually pretty cool. I like this a lot. Even though this looks like Windows 95 style over here, um, this is the V1, this is the first version, and it's already very convenient. I mean, it's completing the entire task for me. It went to Amazon, found the headphones, made a spreadsheet for me, actually saved the document as well. So I could have told this, save the document and then email it to me or email it to someone else. It actually has access to all those tools as long as it can see them on your computer. Awesome, and now we have our final response back and basically said, hey, I searched Amazon, I found uh, three headphones as what you requested against these specific metrics. And then I added them to the spreadsheet and here's the results as well. So after that demo, you can see that Claude takes screenshots of your screen. So in our case, it was that virtual environment. It then understands what it's seeing. And then it moves the virtual mouse and types in the virtual keyboard so they can actually follow our instructions and complete the task. So you have to think that over here, when I went to save the actual file, it would have taken a screenshot of this, recognized where the file button was, and then it would have calculated on the pixels of the actual image and said, okay, it's one centimeter to the right and three centimeters down from the corner. And that's how it knew where to actually position the mouse so that when it clicked it, it clicked the right place. So that was actually a pretty fun demo. And yeah, once again, we're running inside a container. So going down a little bit more. So what are some real life use cases? So right now, this is actually pretty slow and it's actually pretty expensive as well. So every time you make an API call that sends the screenshot across to Claude, it has to process that screenshot and then it has to send information back to the front end and then actually execute on those tasks. So each of those calls is obviously pretty expensive because you're processing large amounts of data, but in time it's gonna get cheaper and cheaper and faster and faster. But here are some sample use cases. So we just went to Amazon, we found some information about headphones, we created a Google Sheet, but you can also do similar things like, hey Claude, go to these 20 websites and make sure they all have contact information. So let's say I make websites in bulk and I just wanna be sure that I've made them correctly. I need someone to check over my work. You can create a prompt that says, check over X, Y, and Z components of each website. Here is the list and then flag anything that went wrong. Or over here, analyze my sales spreadsheet and tell me what to stock next month. So you can even tell it, hey, go onto Shopify, download my sales report from the last 60 days and then tell me what's trending, what I should order more for the next 60 days. And as you saw in this demo, it would have just actually accessed Mozilla. It would have gone into Shopify. You probably would have had to give in your Shopify login information, but then after that, it would have navigated to the report section, downloaded your report, then opened it up in a spreadsheet, 
it would have run some calculations on the numbers, then it probably would have saved that report and then given it to you and then summarized it as well. And another popular use case for AI is to process large amounts of data. So let's say for example, you're a HR firm and you help people hire or recruit. So now imagine you have 50 job applications through LinkedIn and you don't wanna go into each page on LinkedIn each time for each application and review it and then you know either thumb up or thumb down it. You can actually just give it to this computer use model and say, here's a LinkedIn account, here's a space where all the applications are made. Just review it against these three criteria and then shortlist the best candidates. So some use cases that come to mind are automating repetitive tasks. So things that are largely process driven that have to be done multiple times per day. This is a great use case for the computer use model. We had over here testing websites or testing software or even processing spreadsheets or doing manual data entry, managing data across different platforms. This is also very common, like if you wanna run reports or if you wanna take information from your Google Sheet and then upload it into an uploadable form. All these high touch point tasks that are just tedious to do but largely process driven, this is the perfect use case for something like computer use. Okay, and finally, how do we actually get started? So if you've never used something like Docker before or you're kind of hesitant about using computer use, let me show you exactly the steps that you need to take in order to launch this on your computer and start using it today. So the first thing is you need that in virtual environment. So you're gonna need Docker. And to get Docker, we're gonna to go to docker.com, which is this website over here. So all you need to do is click on download Docker desktop. And when you hover over this button, you're gonna see options for Mac, for Windows and for Linux. So just download the version that you need for your machine. My computer's a Mac, so I'm not sure about the install process for Windows or for Linux, but Basically for Mac, you will download this, drag it into your applications folder, and then you would just install it. So whatever your process is for Windows and Linux, just follow that process exactly. And once you download it, you're gonna open up a little application like this. It's gonna look like this, except your space over here is gonna be completely empty because you're not running any virtual environments. So now that you have Docker, you actually have a container for you to run this Claude model in. Now back in Anthropic's GitHub, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and they've got some caution information over here, which you should definitely read. Um, but basically here are the commands that we need to run in our terminal in order to launch this application. So like I mentioned before, when you first get Docker, your space here is gonna be completely empty. And what you really want is you wanna introduce a container like this. So this is a specific one that we're downloading. And you're also gonna need an Anthropic API key, like what we've mentioned over here. So we're gonna need that key. So what that means is you actually have to go to console.anthropic.com and then you can create an account and you can upload some funds and then you can get access to an API key. Now in the API keys tab over here, I've got an option to create a new key. But before I do that, I wanna look at the limits. So right now I'm on tier two, and I think for tier two spend, you have to spend 40 bucks to get into this tier. So looking at rate limits over here in the Anthropics documentation, on tier one, which is what everyone starts off with, you only get 50 requests per minute, which is actually pretty low. If you look over here, you can see that we sent quite a lot of requests where each screenshot is a request. Now, I don't think we're gonna bypass this limit by using the computer use model, but if you run into any problems, you can actually upgrade to tier two to get 1000 requests per minute. So it's obviously a massive jump. The only caveat is to get to tier one, which is where everyone starts, you have to put some credit onto your account and you can get that on a very first day. To get to tier two, you have to have the account for at least 70 days and upload 40 bucks of credit. So I know not everyone can do this and I'm pretty sure that 50 requests should be enough but just in case, if you run into any issues, this is one place that you can look. So back in API keys, now I'm not gonna create in my API key just yet, so I actually need to run a command in my terminal. So over here, step three is, I need to run a few commands in my terminal. So once again, we're in the Anthropic GitHub, and in order for us to deploy this entire page here, again, this virtual environment, which is this mini computer within our computer, all we need to do is run these commands in our terminal. So I'm on Mac, and for me to access my terminal, I just need to go to this search bar, type in terminal, and hit enter and now I have a terminal that I can run these commands in. So for Windows and Linux, if it's not as simple as going to the search bar and typing command, there might be some different terminology that's used. Just go to ChatGPT or Claude and ask it how do you open up a terminal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this first line of code and paste it into my terminal. I'm gonna go over here to create a new API key. Call this test-key. Select my default workspace and hit add. I'm gonna copy this key and hit close. And back in my terminal, I'm gonna replace this API key section with my actual API key. So I'm gonna backspace all this and paste in my API key and I'm gonna hit enter. So now I've taken my API key and I've pushed it into my environment so that when I actually run that virtual environment, it's got my API key so that my API calls are gonna be successful. And you can see over here that it actually needs an API key to run once again, because we're making some API calls. All right, and the next thing we wanna do is run the rest of this command 
So we're just gonna get this and copy it, open up our terminal, we're gonna paste it in. And before I hit enter, I just wanna mention that you have to have your Docker open. So your Docker app has to be open and running. And to make it easier to see what's gonna be happening over here, I've deleted my previous container. So your Docker should look very similar to this. And now I'm gonna run this command. So I'm gonna go back into my terminal, and I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, I hit enter and now the container is visible in my Docker. Now I've already run this command before, so I didn't have to download these files, but when you run this for the very first time, before you actually get this container visible in your Docker, you're gonna be downloading a couple of files over here and it'll probably take a couple of minutes to download those files and once it's done, you will see a message very similar to this. So over here, we're basically instructed to open the local host 8080. So I'm gonna copy this. And once again, I've got this container in my Docker and it's running. I'm gonna open up a new window and then I'm gonna paste this in, hit enter and voila, we have the virtual environment. Okay, so on the left hand side, you can see that there are some settings for which model we choose. And right now we just have one model, our API key, how many recent images we're sending across to our model for each API call. So obviously the more images, the more context. And then we have some system prompt settings. So I'm not gonna change anything over here. And for testing, I don't think you need to change anything either. But back in this page over here for the computer use beta page, if you just scroll down a little bit, there's some instructions over here for how to optimize your prompting, how to set up system prompts, and basically some more documentation that you should just go through and read if you wanna start using this a little bit more. Like for example, there's a list of limitations over here. Like over here, we've got information about spreadsheet interaction, which is not always reliable. We've got scrolling reliability issues and some other issues around vision and processing requests. But for our use case for this demo, I just wanna run this prompt over here. So save a picture of a cat to my desktop. So I'm gonna copy this, go across to our virtual environment and paste it into this prompt over here and let's hit run. All right, so first I'll take a screenshot of what's happening. I'm gonna open up Firefox, awesome. So we're opening up the Firefox browser. Now it's gonna to go to a specific website to get some images, cool. So actually this time it's, it's working pretty quickly. It navigated to Unsplash very quickly. It's gonna be searching for cats pretty soon, so. There we go, went to the search browser and I hit enter. Nice, it's finding some cool pictures of cats. I actually like that one. Wow, this is crazy, the cat's got really blue eyes. Nice, it's gonna click the download button, so it's downloading it for free. There we go, it just downloaded as well. Okay, it ran into an error because it cannot find the file that it's speaking about. So it's gonna check our downloads directory as well. It identified an issue with the way that it, the file was named. Interesting. And it seems to now be in some loop, we're trying to actually uh, repair the issue, so I think I tried to change the name. Let's see if it figures this out. I'm gonna give it a couple more iterations. Okay, so it figured it out. It actually downloaded it to the desktop. Now I'm gonna say, can you open that image so I can see it? Okay, we've just opened up paint, interesting. And it seems like it's gonna open up the cat image in the paint editor. Okay, so now it's running into some issues with paint. All right, anyway, I'm just gonna stop this now. But that was pretty cool. You saw the demo actually downloaded the cat picture. It was able to open up another application paint. So I didn't even tell it to open up paint, but it was thinking on its own about what application it could use. So as you can imagine, it'd be pretty fun to just sit here for quite a while and just um, run through different apps and see what it can do. Before I recorded this video, I actually went to make.com. I gave it my login information and I was trying to get it to create a scenario for me, which it was working. Um, I think I would have had to optimize my prompt a little bit to make it work better, but but it could actually create the make.com scenario. And uh, that just kind of gives me AI exception because I've got an AI model now going across to make.com, which is an automation tool, and then automating the automation process. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of what the Claude computer use model is, how it works, and how to use it. So I've also been using the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Uh, it's actually really, really good for coding. It's much better than the previous version. So if you want to see a bit of a walkthrough of me building out an app or writing some code with a new 3.5 Sonnet, please drop a comment in this video. All right, guys, I hope you have fun using the new cloud computer use model. See ya.